What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're taking out the trash. All right, so you guys saw the title. You saw the thumbnail. Crickets, please. <laughs> So in today's video, you're gonna see stuff from maybe old friends, maybe old brands I used to live for and the brand owners have degraded me. Um, you're gonna see products of brands I just really don't care about anymore that aren't interesting. Today is not about drama, it's about telling the truth. So without further ado, oh God, let's say a silent prayer. <sighs> and let's dive into this video. Hello and welcome back to my channel. The tea in today's video is going to be so hot and piping, you might want to let your tea cool down for a few minutes to avoid burning your tongue on all of it. As you may have seen earlier today on my Twitter, I posted that I was sort of doing a follow-up to the video I did about Huda Beauty where she stole an entire concept from the makeup brand called Beauty Bakery. If you haven't seen that yet, definitely go watch that so that certain parts of this video will make more sense to you later on. The reason this is all getting brought up again is because on Tuesday 16th, Jeffrey teased on his Twitter that he was going to do a video and posted a sneak peek of the brands that he would be using in it. After that teaser, it got a lot of people talking, so he went on to say this later on. Just cleaned out makeup drawers from years ago and the products I found the film with. Let's just say this video will be slightly controversial. Okay, back to filming. Today I'm going to be talking about things I haven't spoken about in a long time with some updates while using these products. Puke emoji, Jesus, take the wheel. Many people speculated that he was going to be spilling a lot of hot tea given the fact that the products in his photo were from brands like Too Faced, Kat Von D, Tarte, and Huda Beauty. And what do all these brands have in common? Jeffrey had beef with all four, which I will cover later on. Everyone's suspicions were confirmed later on that evening when he tweeted out and said, tomorrow the gloves come off. The next day, right before he uploaded the video, he said this on Twitter. In today's video, I address a lot of questions you guys have been asking, and while filming this, I found some very interesting tea. An old friend can't keep my name out of their mouth. I never thought I'd be saying this, but for the first time in years, I was pretty damn excited to see a Jeffree Star video. Yeah, I know. I was mainly excited to see if he was finally going to surprise everyone and spill the tea on what happened between him and several other beauty gurus, mainly Manny and Lara Lee. Anyway, much to my disappointment, he did not spill the tea on any of them. However, he did spill some hot tea, most of which I already knew, but there were some things I definitely did not know about. He used this huge platform to expose Huda Beauty, spilled some recent tea on Kat Von D, how he feels about Tarte Cosmetics nowadays, and he mentioned an interesting bit of tea about how the drama between him and Too Faced died down. Anyway, before I go further, I wanted to say that ever since Jeffrey's video, enough drama concerning Huda Beauty has happened for me to justify this video being a follow-up of sorts to my first video. In that video, I included included some pretty incriminating receipts, and Huda further incriminated herself very recently, so I'll be going into all that in a bit. As for now, I'm going to be breaking down some of the tea he spilled on the drama, past and present. A lot of time has gone by and people do tend to forget the details, so I'll give you all a brief rundown of everything as I go along. Alright, let's start off with a bang. Now, I used to actually live for this primer. This is the Too Faced Hangover Replenishing Face Primer. <laughs> now, a lot of you are probably like, hmm, what do you mean, Jeffrey? We, we don't really ever see you use Too Faced on this channel. Well, that's because I don't ever review or use Too Faced on my channel anymore. I used to actually live for their brand. Yes, in collaboration with Too Faced. Which has been one of my favorite brands for the last 10 years, just so you know. But last year, I defended Tarte with a little makeup scandal video. Oh, this looks kind of nasty. Can we zoom in on that? So if you guys did not know, someone named Jared used to be the owner of Too Faced. He sold his brand to Estee Lauder. Now, last year, he and his sister said some horrible things about me because he was degrading the brand Tarte. And I'm like, honey, you do not invent unicorns. I know you think you do and you're very entitled and you think that you run the world. You don't come back to earth. So it started a huge social media fiasco, if you will. Um, I'm gonna show some screenshots all over the screen in a minute. And Jared, the old owner, but still creative director of the brand, really went in on me and him and his sister, who I don't know if she has anything to do with the brand or if she just uses him for money, um, but she said that my brand was uh, clown makeup. Okay. And they said a lot of other horrible things about me. Um, now, Estee Lauder had to ask them to shut the 
broke up, um, which I don't know if that was ever told on record, and they finally left me alone. I'm Regarding that last statement, according to these old tweets, myself and many others were under the impression that Two-Faced actually sent him a cease and desist due to his behavior after defending Tart when Jared Blandino shaded them on his Instagram. I found that tweet where he said, LOL, when the owner of Two-Faced throws shade at Tart Cosmetics like he invented unicorns. Hashtag egomaniac. Shout out to Tart Cosmetics for being an amazing brand and always serving quality products. Sorry the industry is full of snakes. Tart replied to that tweet and left two purple heart emojis. I can't sit back and watch brands like Tarte, who I love and respect, get dissed by some asshole who thinks he's the queen. Hashtag gross. What I meant by mentioning Jeffrey's behavior a few moments ago, I meant that he quickly evolved into threatening to expose the drama that happened with the Two-Faced and Nikki Tutorials collab, where they allegedly did Nikki dirty and paid her in pennies compared to the money that she was supposed to earn from it. Here's some of those tweets concerning all that. Hey Jared Blandino, should I expose how shady you were with Nikki Tutorials' contract, or maybe save that for another day? If you guys knew the real truth behind Nikki's Two-Faced palette contract, you'd cry for her, but I'll let her tell you one day. Jared Blandino, you guys took advantage of an innocent girl and gave her almost nothing. How the fuck do you sleep at night? The truth always comes out. A Two-Faced employee leaked me the Nikki Tutorials contract. I'll post it only if Nikki says it's okay. While Jared Blandino drives a Bentley and lives in a mansion, Nikki has been suffering in silence, and he posted a photo of a few tweets that Nikki said. She said, please know that I always want the best for you and I've been played. Dirty. I love you. I've been sabotaged from the beginning. There's so many things I want to say, but I can't. I want to, but I can't. And here are the tweets where he strongly implied that he was served with a cease and desist. This week I spilled so much tea and truth. The beauty world is shook. I just got some disturbing news. I'm going to let you guys know everything soon once I find out the entire truth, but I'm in shock at what a brand is trying to do to me. It's sad when huge corporations are scared because I'm exposing the truth. You can't silence me. You do not own me. When other companies and brands want to try and fuck with my money and business behind the scenes, get ready for a bloodbath. After spilling the tea on Too Faced, he went on the shade Tarte Cosmetics. All right, the next item we're going to use, let's go to foundation now. <laughs> we all know about this fiasco. Uh, Tarte, don't love them, don't hate them. They've been a consistent brand that I've kind of liked throughout the years, but when their Shape Tape foundation range hit the internet, we all gasped and threw up. Um, we all know that most brands create more than uh, two shades for women of color, but Tarte decided to say fuck it. Um, if you did not know, I will show the foundation range um, in a second, but the thing that made it worse was the news article of interviewing Tarte and them saying some very weird stuff like, oh, well, you know, this foundation, you know, we don't have that many shades because it's like, you know, you can use some for the winter and then you can transition into your summer shade it was like this weird lame excuse that really never made sense to me and i didn't really get it um but it caused a big stir because their lack of shade range was embarrassing it wasn't just like it was like uh, you know they kind of fucked up it was like girl they fucked up so i really wasn't living for that. This formula, by the way, is not the greatest. Their concealer, though, we all know is a classic. But the foundation was kind of like, eh, for me. And since I reviewed it, it's been sitting in the drawer. Forgot about it, don't care about it, and it's time it goes in the trash. Also, if you are such a big brand with a really big budget, we need brands to start making way more foundation shades. Like, girl, at this stage in the game, anyone can do it. And if you're not doing it at this stage, you're basically just kind of saying like, fuck you to a huge group of people. So Given that Tarte shape tape scandal, I'm not very surprised that he doesn't think too highly of Tarte anymore. I wonder if they're going to take him off their PR list like they did with other influencers who don't paint their products in a less than glowing light. There's some more hot tail on that Jeffrey did not mention, and it's the fact that not only was the shade range an entire joke, Tarte repackaged the discontinued hybrid gel foundation, poured it into a new bottle, and slapped the shape tape name on it since their shape tape concealer is one of their top sellers. This next bit of hot tea he spilled was about Kat Von D, and many of you already know what happened between them, but for those that don't, here's the post she posted all over her social media. After years of making excuses for and rationalizing Jeffrey's inappropriate behavior, including promoting drug use, racism, and bullying, I can no longer hold my tongue after recent events. I know that over the years, many of you were introduced to Jeffrey through me, and regardless if you choose to continue to follow him or not, I just want to disassociate myself 
well from him and his brand at this point on. I plan on posting a video explanation as to why I felt compelled to make such a statement, but for the time being, I simply want to apologize to anybody and everybody who has ever had to deal with any of his negativity. And yes, with a heavy heart, I will be pulling the shade Jeffrey from my collection, sending extra love to everyone out there. And now for the tea that he spilled in his video, here it is. All right, now the next product, girl. Let's just hold it up. Bam! This is the Kat Von D. What was this called? This shit is so old. This is the Shady Bronzer. Hmm? Fitting. Now, if you are someone that is newly subscribed to me or you don't know the real tea, girl, just Google my name and this person's name. Now, before any of you try to chime in or if anyone is here that is um, a Kat Von D fan, let me just remind you of one thing. I was her friend for 10 years, you've never met her. So do I know the real tea? Of course I do. Um, if you do not know the scenario, basically two summers ago, my brand was skyrocketing, Kat Von D was stagnant, and she decided to cross out my face and um, let the internet know a bunch of crazy lies. Of course, I responded and debunked everything that she said because she was completely full of shit, and there's always just been a weird tension ever since. Now we're talking 10 years of friendship, and in that 10 years, a lot happened. But uh, a funny fact, fact, when all that happened, I remember her saying one thing. She basically said that um, her lipstick, which by the way was a top seller in Sephora called Jeffrey, of course, with my spelling, she named a lipstick after me years ago and it has literally been on sale every single day up until about two weeks ago. So even after our fight, imagine Sephora, who is of, of course affiliated with Kendo, which is a company that owns her brand, they um, denied her request and they sold her Jeffree lipstick up until about a month ago um, on Sephora.com. So the fact that you have a face of a brand and your name is on the packaging and you couldn't even tell them and get my shade taken down, can't relate, I own my own company. I also thought that was weird about the fact that she still sold the Jeffrey lipstick despite claiming she was going to discontinue it. I mean, why claim you're gonna pull the lipstick before submitting a request to stop selling it? All right, so while editing this video, I discovered some information that was very interesting to me. Now, if we all remember in Kat Von D's video about me, she said that she would sadly be removing the Jeffrey liquid lip from Sephora and her website. <laughs> well, we just logged on to KatVonDBeauty.com, which is her personal website where she ships products from aside from Sephora. And you can click right now and still buy the Jeffrey lipstick. So it's crazy that you can click it right now and buy it. There were so many lies in her video. It's crazy how uh, another one is debunked and it's just so crazy that right now, 2018, you're seeing Jeffrey who? But the Jeffrey Liquid Lip is on your website. So what's what's good, sis? That's all you gotta say. That is the most like uncreative response or clapback or anything that I've ever heard in my life. So um, this is the last remaining product I have of hers, and now it's over. Next. Pretty interesting, right? I already knew this, but I also knew that Sephora sold it for a lot cheaper for a while before they pulled it from their shelves. As for the Jeffrey Who line, here's more on that. So a lot of you are going, okay, is there any more tea? Of course there is. So so let's throw up the screenshot. I guess she just uploaded a video on her wedding. Um, let me let me go click this right now. Someone wrote, I get um, Jeffrey Star is probably at home watching this or something like that. I'll throw up a screenshot right now. Um, and she, Miss Thing, had to write. Jeffrey who with a wink and I'm like That's all you can say Jeffrey who how about Jeffrey that had the lipstick uh, in Sephora with my motherfucking name on it with your company For the last 10 years. How about Jeffrey? That's in all your books all your memories like girl because she was always a friend that had the nicer stuff and um, The roles reversed. So anyway, I don't know why she's still talking about me So I thought you know what let me just respond so I could stop getting a million tweets about it because it does get really old It's like a constant reminder. It's like an open wound. It's like oh you're done. Oh, someone has to mention this person again. So I'm like, Jeffrey, who? Hate to say it, but he does have a point there. On one hand, I get it that maybe she was trying to be quirky with her own version of the infamous Mariah Carey, I don't know her quote. But on the other hand, it's also strange since she kept selling the lipstick she named after him despite dissociating herself from him. Later on that evening, he sent out this tweet where he shaded Kat for being against vaccinating children. He posted a screenshot from his video where he was leaning back and looked disgusted and he said, here's an actual picture of Kat Von D's baby when it found out they weren't getting vaccinated. 
Many people thought the tweet was funny, while others thought it was tasteless due to many people believing that someone's child should never be brought into an argument when they have nothing to do with it. Normally, I would wholeheartedly agree with this, but Kat brought her child into all this when she made it everyone's business when she announced on her social media that she was planning on not vaccinating her baby. I mean, this was so freaking controversial and angered so many people, myself included, that everyone is still talking about this, so of course people are going to have something to say about it. Given all the backlash he received, for this tweet, Jeffrey took to his Instagram story the next day to acknowledge all this. You're living through the pain, you're living through the breakup. Um, I, you, you really don't know what the real tea is. So, listen, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. A lot of you are like, Jeffrey, we are so shocked that you mentioned Kat Von D. And I'm like, girl, before my brand was huge, before I was even on YouTube, I was friends with this person for such a long time, literally a third of my life. So, I've kept very quiet, actually, over the last few years, very silent. I've said a few comments here and there on Instagram, um, but overall, I've been very just like, like, girl, it's all good. I've, I've been over that situation, but when someone in your past comes back and like acknowledges you and tries to say something, it's like, girl, do you need free press? Do you need free publicity? Like, girl, I thought you were doing all right. I, 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 I guess not. So when someone that made up so many like vicious lies about me mentions me, I was kind of like, but that wasn't even the whole point of the video. The whole point of the video was to touch on so many different subjects. Um, talk about the Hoodie Beauty situation. You know, I talk about in the video how Hoodie Beauty literally stole an entire idea and concept from a smaller brand. And most people just wanted to keep their mouth shut about it or they didn't know about it. Um, and it's okay to speak up on things. I have gotten in trouble in the past and definitely learned, um, that I've chimed in on a lot of stuff that maybe I shouldn't have or it wasn't my place, but these things are really important in this beauty community. And if a lot of people don't want to speak out, it's all good, honey. You're afraid. You're afraid off that PR list. I don't know what these other people are afraid of. They're afraid of a brand deal, maybe. I don't know. I don't have those fears. And I just want you guys to know that I will always... 100% be honest with everything I do, whether it's a conversation about someone, whether it's a review, you're always going to get the facts. And that's all. That's all it's going to be. Um, and I know that there are a lot of shady people out there. There's a lot of liars. And this community is crazy. But um, the truth. So just real quick, I know a lot of people have been waiting and waiting for me to talk about Kat for a long time. And I really had nothing to say. Um, I was just shocked one day to wake up and... A friend that I loved and cared about backstabbed me so hard and people pick sides I get it um, it doesn't matter it's my life at the end of the day and it was something that I had to go through it was really horrible so um, I guess the big thing of the video of today is the fact that regardless of Kat Von mentioning me the other day on her channel saying Jeffrey who um, she was very adamant about pulling my lipstick two years ago and here we are two and a half years ago and the free lipstick with my spelling, which is trademarked, but I let her have my, you know, use my name a long time ago, so I'm not mad about that. Um, but it's just funny that it's still for sale on her website right now. I'm like, I mean, give it like 10 hours, they're gonna probably remove that shit tomorrow morning. They're probably panicking right now, thinking that they wouldn't ever be like caught, but like, girl, you're still selling. So imagine, okay, just, just imagine for one second that you are me and someone that hated me so adamantly, made up so many false lies, is still making a profit off of my name. That's why I got a little upset. Um, I was kind of shocked. I'm like, really? Still? Like, I don't understand. Can't relate. So that's why I mentioned her in the video. Haven't mentioned her in a long time and probably won't do it again. But um, all sarcasm aside, I was a little shocked. So I don't know what will happen. Hopefully it gets taken down because it's really bizarre to me. Um, but I just feel bad for her, like, girl. So, of course, there isn't a lot more stuff in today's video, but um, I just wanted to touch on that and talk to you guys privately one-on-one. -on -one. Some people that watch the video may not ever watch the snap, and that's okay. I just want you guys to know my subscribers and my customers, that's the real tea, and that's what happened today. So, if you have time, go check it out. Um, and besides that,
Girl, I am exhausted from today's filming, so I am going to go take a little nap, which feels so weird to nap in the day. Bitch, I do not do this, so I'm gonna go try to down for a minute, cuddle with Nate and the dogs, and just um, celebrate how great today was. The same day he tweeted on an ad campaign for Kat Von D's Jeffrey Lipstick that his mom found while she was using Facebook. The tweet says, My mom just found this ad on Facebook. Who's evil enough to want to make a profit off of someone that they despise? Can't relate. Hey Kat, take this shade down before you embarrass yourself anymore. The foolery in the beauty community sometimes hurts my head. Whether you like him or hate him, it's no secret that Jeffrey's brand has been taken off again for the first time since all this went down two years ago. So the fact that she created an ad to solely advertise the the lipstick she named after him, the one she claimed she was going to discontinue, that is pretty embarrassing if you ask me. Last but certainly not least, here's the tea on Huda Beauty along with the follow-up to my previous video that I did about her. Now, what is the tea on this? You may say, Jeffrey, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, let's throw up a few images. There is a indie brand that we have used on this channel, I've actually reviewed it, that is called Beauty Bakery. It is a black-owned brand from a beautiful woman that actually survived cancer. She started her makeup brand and she is really flourishing. Um, but she is still a very small company and they are very indie compared to the giant of Huda Beauty. This ad campaign and the entire collection was revealed online and every single comment on Trend Mood and on everyone's pages was like, you literally stole her concept. Huda has really never acknowledged it. She's just keep it moving, making her money. Um, I don't like that. Now, Beauty Bakery, if you have not heard of them, have been out since 2011. Their packaging looks like this. Everything is about baking and cake and it's their full aesthetic. I mean, hi, are you guys kidding me right here? The entire packaging idea was stolen and I don't understand why. Um, Huda Beauty is all about like being in the desert and sand and all this crazy stuff and her culture. Why are you stealing someone else's um, whole entire concept? And the fact that she's never really acknowledged it uh, really bothers me. I think she's just gonna think that, oh, well, whatever, people won't care in a month and we'll make all of our money. So anyway, while well, it's great to call out big brands ripping off indies and not giving credit to them, especially if you have a big platform, let's not forget that he and Manny MUA did the same thing to an indie brand named Black Moon Cosmetics, who is smaller to them in comparison. As a matter of fact, Black Moon Cosmetics sued them and won. Jeffrey and Manny were forced to redo the packaging completely and had to pay Black Moon Cosmetics a lot of money. And now on to Huda. I intentionally left this part out much earlier in the video and I wanted to mention it here. The morning after Jeffrey's video hit the internet, he tweeted out that a brand he shaded and it reached out to him and missed the entire point of his video. The tweets read, Girl, just waking up and got a few interesting DMs from a brand I mentioned in yesterday's video. Let me respond to this brand and see how they respond back to me. They basically ignored my whole point of what I said and dogged the truth. Can't relate. The next day, Jeffrey tweeted out the aforementioned brand was in fact Huda Beauty. He also leaked these DMs as well. The tweet says, well, it's safe to say that Huda Beauty is a fucking embarrassment to the makeup community. Here's our conversation where she won't admit or speak out about stealing from Beauty Bakery. I will never support her again. Hey, I'm sure by now you watched the video. Your comment above suggests otherwise, but to fully understand where I was coming from, you would actually have to watch it. My problem was with you stealing your entire setting powder concept from a tiny indie brand and a cancer survivor mother. I don't know who on your team gave you the idea or if you decided yourself you were going to use an entire brand idea, but a lot of people in the beauty community were shocked. I don't have any personal problems with you and I know that there is no hate. My title and my video for you had nothing to do with you. It was just generalizing a bunch of brands and scenarios and people wanted me to speak up about. I know on your brand page and everyone on Tremoon kept tagging Beauty Bakery and no one has seen you acknowledge it. Anyway, here's the DMs. Huda wrote to Jeffrey and said, Hey Jeffrey, I heard you posted a private conversation and then deleted it and also said I blocked you while I was still following you, which is unfortunate. Please excuse my candor, but I don't communicate like this. I genuinely just wanted to clarify things between us, but it seems like you had other needs and or intentions. Nonetheless, I wish you best in the future. Jeffrey replied to that and said, I never once said you blocked me. Complete lie, but whatever makes you sleep at night. You refuse to admit that you're a thief and you will never acknowledge stealing from Beauty Bakery. Just know that you're a horrible person. You also have issues with people of color and the LGBT community, so you have a lot more problems to worry about. Sad that so much poison exists in the beauty community, thanks to you. 
Jeffrey followed up that tweet in a screenshot of the DMs he had with Huda and said, It's crazy how money hungry some of these brand owners are. Huda the thief never once acknowledged what she did wrong. Are we surprised? And just for the record, when did I ever say that she blocked me? Can't relate. After these DMs went viral, Huda did some backpedaling of her own. Hey guys, so I've been getting so many questions on a lot of our campaigns and really kind of the process and, you know, where we get inspiration and where we kind of drive that from. And um, that's not something we usually share, but since we've been getting so many questions about how we do it, we definitely want to share with you guys. And a huge thank you to everyone out there for making um, the launch so successful. We really love you guys so much. And we've seen a lot of people even recreate some of the looks as well. Um, and you guys know this is like a very 50s inspiration. So it was so cute to see what you guys created. And so we just shot a video literally just a couple hours ago, kind of going through the entire inspiration process. And, um, you know, we kind of wanted to let you in on our world. And we loved doing that so much. So we're going to start doing this for you guys more. And let us know if you guys want to see that. You guys swipe up to watch this video but this shows everything from creating the product to the color palette why we named it what we named it um you know everything you need to know for our process so i can't wait for you guys to watch this make sure you guys swipe up sending you guys lots of love and positivity she then uploaded a video on her instagram channel where she explained the supposed creative process that went into the huda beauty easy bake campaign which i will play at the end of this video i found it suspicious that she not only avoided the claims that she stole from beauty bakery in these dms completely but but she also agreed with some of the people on Instagram that Jeffrey is irrelevant. As a matter of fact, he tweeted out a few of his screenshots of the comments where Huda replied to and said in the tweet, this is what happens when someone is feeling guilty. Hashtag Huda Beauty is cancelled. Hashtag bully. Hashtag gross. Someone on Instagram wrote, I really wanted to get some of your products, but you not addressing the fact that you potentially stole from a smaller business is not cutting it for me. Yikes. Huda Beauty responded to this person and said, if it was true, darling, I 100% would address Address it as if it would only be fair, but we did not see the campaign until people brought it to life. Someone else on Instagram wrote, Jeffrey's only attacking because he's no longer relevant. Huda responded with a few smile emojis, strongly implying that she is agreeing with them. And then someone else replied to that person and said his multi-million dollar brand is still relevant, haunty. In addition to all that, what's even more suspicious is the fact that she deleted this video shortly after she posted it since many people called BS on this. Anyway, that's it for this video. As always, let me know what you think down below below and I'll see you all soon. Hey guys, so I want to do a quick video here on IGTV, kind of giving you a little bit of a background on the way we come up with the concepts for our photo shoots, our campaigns, our products. We've been getting a lot of questions on various different projects, specifically right now, and um, we got a lot of questions on our Easy Bake Powder. And you know, we want to be able to answer everything and show you guys our entire development process in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> We're trying to give you as much details as possible without boring you guys. So first of all, bake Baking is something that I fell in love with. Um, once I started doing it, I noticed that my makeup just looked like really airbrushed. And you know, I always had issues. Like I have lots of wrinkles and my makeup would move into my wrinkles and I smile too much. So I'd always have like these crazy smile lines by the end of the day. And when I discovered baking, I actually discovered it from the drag community and they've been using it for years and years and years. Actually, baking actually originated from early Egypt. They did a different form of baking then. And then later on with the Victorian era, a lot of people use it then too. So this is something we've seen. Oh, over and over and over again. They used it in old Hollywood. It was super popular then, you know, in the 50s to 60s, all those times. And when the drag community came out, they really kind of, I think, made it really more public because you would see them just like baking. It was really kind of an art. It actually became more artful and something that, you know, people I think started to appreciate much more. It had two terms. It was kind of cooking or baking. And so a lot of people now call it baking. When we decided that we wanted to do a baking product because we were so in love with baking, we wanted it to be something easy because that was always the problem. Like baking actually is kind of hard to do. Like it's, you know, you usually get a big thing of powder and then you like fluff it over and then you have to take a little bit of powder and put it different places. But there's always a mess, right? And if you have OCD, <laughs> that's always a nightmare. And uh, if you're somebody who hasn't tried baking, that's scary. So what we wanted to do is really make it as easy as possible. So we fell in love with the idea of a sifter and just kind of making it more controlled. And uh, we kind of shared this with all of our retailers and the one where they kept saying was, oh my God, it's so easy, it's so easy, easy, easy. Oh my God, baking made easy, baking easy easy bake and so uh, my team was like oh my gosh let's just call it easy bake because it's just why hasn't anyone called it easy bake yet so um we just were like that just makes sense let's just go ahead and do that and um when we had na named our foundations we had named them all after i don't know if you guys remember but like 
yumminess because we feel like skin tones are just delicious like they're just so yummy like no matter what the skin tone it's like it looks like a delicious flavor whether it's like caramel or vanilla or chocolate or macchiato or fudge or you know like macaroon <laughs> whatever the shade is it's delicious so um, you know here's our fill filter this is my shade toffee um, you know we just love the ideas of making you know skin tones sound delicious because that's what they really are. So we kind of carried that over into our Easy Bake and we named them all after baked goods, which I thought was really cute. We have banana bread, which is my favorite. We have cinnamon bun, we have sugar cookie, pound cake, we have coffee cake, we have kunafa. We always like to throw in a little Middle Eastern twist. So there's always something in there, you know, that kind of represents like deliciousness and these are just baked, so it makes sense. So when it came to the campaign, just because it's obvious because it's a baking product and the name was Easy Bake, we thought it'd be really fun to kind of come up with a concept of like modern day baker. So, you know, like back in the 50s, back in the 60s, you know, women were always like kind of like, you know, they were baking, they were cute. There was a pin of air, so girls were kind of flurry. They were like, oh, you know, and we were, we just thought that was like so much fun to play on. So we created this beautiful mood board. And as you can see, like, it's kind of like, it starts from different places. It shows a woman baking in the baking aisle. Then she like brings everything home. She's playing with everything. She's cooking. She's on her phone. She's chatting. Lucille Ball was actually a huge inspiration for us. If you guys saw Huda Boss as well, that was something we talked about. She was a huge inspo for us. Just that like, you know, she's quirky. She's funny. She's modern day, you know, housewife. She was like, at the time she was modern because she had a lot of personality, a lot of sass, and that's what we we think that you know you should be it's fine that was kind of the beginning of our inspiration and one of the things I don't know if you guys know this but a lot of times I'm actually in the labs making makeup and we bake makeup we cook makeup you know we're mixing all kinds of things Twilight from our desert dust I made it by hand literally <laughs> so you know a lot of times when you're in the labs like and you're in that process of making makeup we kind of wanted to translate that into a kitchen because just it made sense so we thought we'd kind of like you know we we're playing a little bit on that we were playing on the 50s inspiration we were playing on the process and the name of baking and what it is so you know a lot of these things have been around for decades <laughs> a lot of things actually everything has been around for decades and then we just kind of pulled everything together that's really what it was so and what once you actually you know and anybody out there who wants to learn how to do campaigns once you kind of create like the inspo it's really great to do a color palette so my team came up with this beautiful my team and I worked on this beautiful color palette and everybody got involved like the photographers everybody you know it's kind of it's actually really great when you kind of like can bounce off each other it's like the best thing ever and pink and mint are like one of the most common Common themes of the 60s so we just thought let's go for that you know the 50s 60s they use a lot of mint and, and cream so we thought let's just roll with that because it's just really beautiful it looks really cute I mean look at this look at this look at this how cute is that really like oh my gosh and if you guys want to know what's really cool we actually built an entire set and we imported we found a 1950s, 1960s oven. We built an entire grocery store. I'm gonna show you guys, it's so cute. But we literally built the entire set from scratch and we literally found things from the 50s and 60s. We just had like the best team ever. And so this is kind of the beginning, right? We literally built this entire set too. So I'll show you guys, this is the inspo and I'll show you guys the actual picture. But you know, like this like this old school, you know, kind of retro vibe of a woman in the grocery store and what she's looking for is like her ingredients. She wants to find everything. And you know, it's, it's, this, it's the 50s, the 60s. So she's like, she's really like, you know, it's a cute time. It's a really like kitschy, cute time. Lots of color, lots of funness. The outfits are really, really like amazing. And so after she goes to the grocery store, she finds what she needs. I think I literally have a picture doing this exact pose. <laughs> and after that, what she basically does is she goes in the kitchen and she starts like kind of putting her ingredients together she starts baking she plays with all the baking stuff all the ingredients the eggs the flour whatever the ingredients are you know the rolling pan all those accessories that you would have and then afterwards so this is like our mood board so kind of how you guys know and afterwards um, you know we have this whole like inspo where you know you're taking what you've baked out of the oven and true story if you did see Huda Boss and you saw the episode I didn't know I had strep throat while we were shooting the campaign and when we were shooting this photo in particular I thought I was gonna die I was like shivering <laughs> it was really challenging um, but it was a good time it was a good time afterwards I thought it was <laughs> it was a good time and then we have of course the baked goods so when you're presenting the actual baked goods so you know we had our different way of doing that we were really inspired by some of these photos. Of course, they're cartoons, but it still is such a good kind of show of what they did in the 50s and 60s. And of course, you know, we want to do one where you actually have the baking products on your face because we just thought that's so fun. So, you know, we really built an entire, again, an entire set that is so retro. We brought like an old school, like hair salon, kind of like some of the things that you have in a hair salon into our old school kitchen. It was so cool. We'll post a video so you guys can see how we actually built the entire
car set, but we went hardcore. I don't know if you guys have noticed, that's something we've been doing this entire year. Our brand has been around for um, about five years, but we've only been doing color cosmetics for three. So I think a lot of people are like, wow, this is like totally different. It's new, it's exciting. Of course, like baking isn't something new, but the concept is so cool. But, and the campaign was so cool. You guys went all out, but I don't know if you guys noticed we're doing that all year round in all our campaigns. And of course the last shot is that really, I love Lucy, like, you know, like that, like, that. that's actually what I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll show you guys how we actually got into character too because I think it's really important that you guys see that as well. Um, and again, some of the baked goods that we have, and if, I wish you guys were on set to see, but these baked goods are so cute. We actually found a retro bakery in LA and they baked these like amazing retro sweets. It was so cool. It was like the most amazing thing. So you can see um, these are actually our flavors or our baking powders, have sugar cookie, pound cake, you know, coffee cake, unafa, all of these things. They're all like right here. So this is kind of like some of the inspo for what we actually had on set. We like to put that on paper as well. Yeah, and then we also had some additional stuff which we didn't get to, unfortunately, because I had strep throat. <laughs> but it was a really fun shoot and the campaign, everything came together really beautifully. It was really amazing. And I think ultimately, I know that the concept of baking is really simple. It's been around literally forever, but we wanted to bring the campaign to life and we thought it would be a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you guys one last thing. This was a book that I used to kind of get into character while we were shooting. It's called The Art of Pinup. I'm gonna try to pull up something that doesn't have nudity because there's a lot of nudity in them. Let me just go to the page that's marked. Yeah, we had a lot of this like sassiness and it's actually such a huge heavy book. If you can buy it, definitely get it. I think it's from Tashin. Um, and I actually had to order a new one and have it sent to LA because it's so heavy. But we had a lot of this like flirtiness. No. Okay, Never mind. A lot of nudity. Where is no nudity? Is there only one page with no nudity? You know, we had a lot of this going on, like not with like, you know, necessarily the wardrobe, but like the attitude. <laughs> It was just a lot of fun. Um, it was one of our, you know, really exciting campaigns. We also shot some really exciting campaigns for Rose Gold, also our Demi Match. So we'll try to do the whole inspiration for all of those as well. You know, and hopefully you guys enjoyed, you know, seeing the campaign. We saw a lot of people who were really excited. Some people were kind of like curious how we came up with the concept. So for everyone out there who's wondering, this is exactly how it came out. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. And definitely let us know what are the campaigns, even if it's like an old campaign, maybe we can revive some of the, the details of that. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time.